what is going on everybody tech enthusiast here and in this video i'm going to show you how to fix the lenovo t480 if the internal drive fails and this might also work for other laptops so in my case the internal ssd has failed and i'm just going to remove that and insert a nvme in the wireless one port so i'll just show you what happens so i'm just going to turn it on as normal and it doesn't even boot into windows now there is an option when you turn it on and if you start pressing the uh, enter button it should interrupt the boot and it's just basically frozen at this section right here it doesn't even move past this so i'm just going to put it down again and press the uh, enter key again it doesn't really do anything if we was able to go into the boot menu and the bios then the proper thing would have been going into the settings in the bios then the power option and disabling the internal battery before tinkering with anything inside. So what we need to do is basically force the laptop to shut down by pressing the power button and start removing the back cover. With the laptop facing down, there are four outer screws and two middle screws that need to be removed. But before that, we need to remove the external battery. Personally, I'm gonna start off with the middle screws and I'm gonna speed up the video here. One thing I want to mention is that none of the screws come out completely. They will stay in the case. Don't worry about that. So with all of the screws removed, firstly, I'm going to see if I can pry it open with my fingers. And so far, it does look like I can do it. So let me just uh, lift it up and you can see the opening here. And I'm just going to carefully continue opening it. But if you can't open it, make sure you do use a pry tool but be cautious at the same time as you don't want to break any of the clips inside. So I'm just going to work my way around slowly until it comes off. Okay, so with the back cover removed, we can see the SSD on the top right hand corner. So I'm going to start taking that out. And here is the connector. So we've got a little wire we can play around with. So I'm just going to slowly take it out. And it's popped right off and here you can see the connector i believe it's a sata connector and this is the ssd i've not heard of this brand but it's let me down anyway uh, let's just put that aside and some other t480s i believe they have a different drive here or connector it's like a caged version and you've got a slot for the nvme but not in my case so just do a bit of research when, before you get to this point okay so what I'm going to do now well you can put the cover on to be safe but I'm just going to put this battery on and I want to see if we can go into the boot menu so I'm just going to carefully hold the battery and place the laptop down again I wouldn't advise you to do this so what we're going to do is power it on Let me just get it in view for you guys. So power on now and I'm just going to press enter to interrupt the boot. And as you can see, we've got the boot menu option here. So it looks like the SSD was the fault. OK, so what we're going to do now is turn off the laptop. Just hold down the power button. And again, make sure you're very careful when you turn it around. If you're doing it like myself, I wouldn't advise it. Just put the back cover on if you want to test it. Okay, so I'm just going to take the battery away. And in this case, I'm not going to use the SSD. Maybe I'll visit in the future. But I want to put the NVMe in this wireless one port. And I'll just show you what that looks like. So this takes a 2242 NVMe, so bear that in mind. And here it is. This is a Western Digital 2242 520 uh, model. And as you can see, it's got two cutouts. The M and B keys have cutouts here. I'm just trying to focus it in if I can. From what I've read online, the 520 works very good with this uh, laptop. So what we're going to do is 
get a uh, small Phillips screwdriver and I'll just zoom in slightly here and we just need to unscrew that so basically this screw will hold down the NVMe and here you can see it's a very small screw Next, we're going to slot in the uh, the NVMe. Make sure this side of the sticker is facing up. Okay, so that's in. We're just going to press it down a little. And then carefully put the screw back in. It is magnetic. And we're just going to start screwing that in and you can screw it in until you can feel it getting a bit firm and just stop at that point okay so that's pretty much it we're done with that if you want optionally if you got dust you can blow it out so now we're just going to put the back cover on now if you're installing windows like myself then you need to download an app called rufus which will help you create a bootable usb drive now with your usb inserted you should see that detected here as for the settings within rufus you don't need to change anything well i didn't change anything at all just leave everything alone then drag and drop your iso so i've got windows 11 home and i will leave a link in the description and once again we don't need to change any settings at all as for the volume label you can give it a custom name i'm just going to leave it on the default here and then we're going to click on start we're going to get a pop-up which allows you change a few more settings so you can remove the need to have a microsoft account already have a windows 11 account and if you've got a low spec ram the device you can also enable that on the top so click on ok and it's going to give you a warning that everything's going to be deleted click on ok and now it's going to start so i've just basically forwarded it all the way to the end and we're going to close that and take out the USB drive and pop it into the laptop. So I'm using a USB-C flash drive and I have it inserted in the bottom port. You can also use a USB-A flash drive. You just need to use the ports on the right hand side. So once we have powered on the laptop, we're just going to wait and then press enter to interrupt the boot. And then we get this option so here we're going to press f1 to go into bios so i'm just going to show you some optional settings here and i'll explain why that is so what we're going to do is press right until we get to security then go to the bottom to secure boot now for secure boot you can see that it is enabled when i tap on enter then disabled then enter again then press escape then move to the right to start up then go down to UEFI legacy boot press enter and we can change the settings here we can leave it on both then um, go up to boot now we're going to go up to boot if we're going to have two drives in this laptop because we want to make sure that it boots off the uh, NVMe so if you scroll down then hold shift key and then the plus key and then that will move your desired uh, drive up so make sure you have the uh, boot drive on top of your second drive i'm going to press escape now and then at the bottom it says boot device list f2 options it's already enabled now at this point we can just press f10 save and exit but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to shut it down for me it was different i could just turn on the laptop and when the uh, logo comes on i can just press f12 and it will take me to the boot menu so we're just going to wait a few seconds and here we are so here you can see the drives listed so i've got my nvme as you can see here and then secondly my usb stick is there so we're just going to go down and then press enter and we're just going to see this screen and i've just sped up the video here basically it'll take you to the beginning of the installation for windows 11 and once again i'll speed up the video 
So here we're just going to select the NVMe drive. This is disk zero for me. So I'm just going to make sure that is selected and then click on next. I'll just need to wait a few seconds here. And then it'll just show you you're installing Windows 11 and then uh, click on next. And again, it's going to go through the setup. It might restart a few times and I'll speed up the video. Okay, so Windows 11 has installed. So at this point, basically, you just click on next and go through setting it up as you normally would. And here you can see we have successfully booted into Windows 11. So there you have it. This is how you can save your ThinkPad T480 if the internal drive fails. And this is not just restricted to the ThinkPad T480. It should also work on other laptops. Now I just want to mention that I only used a 256 gigabyte NVMe as that would be my primary drive for the Windows and apps. And this gives me the option to add a larger capacity SSD in the SATA port that I showed you earlier in the video. So that wraps up for this video. If you have found it useful, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, then please do consider subscribing as it will help me out. Thanks for watching and I will catch up with you in the next video.